Brace yourself because what this professor is dishing out is straight up madness. These are all celebrities who have been called out, criticized, mm -hmm. and condemned mm -hmm. for cultural appropriation. Has anyone here ever called someone out for cultural appropriation? You too? You have? You have? Has anybody here ever thought twice about wearing something or doing something, even cooking something, out of fear of being accused of appropriation? You have? Yes. Yeah, what was it? Um, my daughter had braids and she wanted me to get braids that were just like hers. Why her but not you? She's um, half black and half white. Okay. And so I just think that some things should stick with those cultures. Well, no matter whether you believe it's harmful or you think people should just be allowed to do what they want, there is no doubt this is a hot button topic that people are passionate about. Dr. Neil Lester, a professor of English at Arizona State University, right? I am. Yes. And you've published, lectured, and taught extensively the area of African American studies. What do you think about appropriation? Do you think this is a real thing, something that people need to be cognizant of? And if so, why? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, because if, if we, in fact, are trying to look at the humanity of other people and we are trying to live in a place where we are trying to be respectful and mindful of folks, then we need to be aware of things that are important to other cultures that don't necessarily look like us or share the same values. So it is a thing, and people need to be aware of can anybody appropriate? Uh, anybody can appropriate, yes. Not just white people? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Appropriation is intersectional. So old people can appropriate youth culture. Youth culture can appropriate old folks. Uh, people who are not incarcerated can impersonate uh, you know, prisoners or those who are incarcerated. Uh, men appropriate women's attire for the sake of funny. Uh, and mocking. So absolutely anybody can do it and everybody on some level may have flirted with it. Huh? What is this professor talking about? It, it, I'm just I'm just checking my brain because I feel like all prior knowledge and since I had up to this point, just listening to this professor right here, I feel like it's all melting away right now. Just what is he talking about? For real? Okay, but a lot of the time that people that I've seen are called out for this, it's not that they were making fun or mocking in some way. It was just that they had adopted a, a fashion or a style or whatever. I would say that's a performance. So if somebody's culture and somebody's identity becomes a performance, then it's reductive. So if you're reducing, for example, say, the civil rights movement to an afro and you wear that or you wear dreadlock wigs, you know, that uh, Rastafarians may wear, you do that because it's edgy, because it's cool, but ultimately because it's not you. And you're getting some kind of cultural capital from that by doing it. And, and who's hurt by that? Well, it's not a matter of who's hurt by it, it's who's being disrespected by it. Well, who's being disrespected by it? A then? whole culture of people whose identities are wrapped in whatever you're dressing into and can then take off. Abala, you don't agree? I don't, no. You think worrying about appropriation is a waste of time? I, I think not only is it somewhat a waste of time, but it's nearly impossible. You just mentioned there are nearly hundreds of ways that one could appropriate somebody else's culture or their, their livelihood. And to expect any one human being to keep on top of that throughout their entire life, I think, is an unrealistic ask. And I think imitation is a form of flattery. I appreciate my food by eating it. I appreciate the hair that I wear by wearing it, by putting on the clothes that I, that I wear. Amen. And every single item around us in this room could probably be attributed to a certain culture. Do we have to constantly worry about what culture we, we gain things from? Nope. Does intention have anything to do with well, it? Well, I guess I didn't hear anything about anybody worrying about it. What I, heard, what, I, what I hear about when I think about and talk about cultural appropriation is people becoming more aware of it. We could say the same thing about racism, sexism, homophobia. Just because you can't solve it and don't see it at every corner doesn't mean we shouldn't be aware of it and trying to address wow, it. Do you so really in, put those on the same level? I absolutely Racism do. and sexism, absolutely. you put it on the same level as, as cultural appropriation. That's exactly. So if somebody wears their hair like you're wearing it, you put that on the same level as, as racism. Absolutely. Wow. 
I put that on the same wow. level as white supremacy. Are you for because white supremacy <laughs> is intersectional. Do you have a... Sh oh, he got to be lying. He got... Hold on, hold on. This can't be real. It, shout out to Dr. Phil. I'm going to call Philip a doctor today. I know Oprah gave him that name, and I think he had something with psychology and some other stuff. So he was on point with that one right there. His face, his reaction at the end. I love that. I give I give Phil credit on this one. Old doctor came through, but I just got to roll that last clip back. Is he is he being dead serious right now? And trying to address wow, it. Do you so really the same put level on the same level? I absolutely Racism do. and sexism, absolutely. you put it on the same level as, as cultural appropriation. That's exactly. So if somebody wears their hair like you're wearing it, you what put that on the same level as, as racism. Absolutely. Wow. I put that on the same wow. level as white supremacy because white supremacy is intersectional. Oh, my goodness. Great Jehoshaphat. Do y'all ever just stop and look around and think about how blessed and privileged we are to be Americans? Like, just really take a second to smell smell the roses around. And a lot of people take it for granted. But these people right here take privilege to the extreme, so much so that they have to make believe issues in order to feel some sort of oppression. I'm just wondering, where does this professor that I assume does lectures on a regular basis to his classroom and like he just tried to come on the Dr. Phil show and do, where does he think the language that he's speaking, that English language? language where does he think that originates from or how about the expensive italian shoes and the suit that he's rocking that's probably designed by some scottish folks he might even drive a superbly crafted german engineered car so is he appropriating those cultures it looks to me like he's a professional victim because he's rocking dreadlocks i doubt he's rasta he might be but there's a, a ton of different things that all of us exhibit on a daily basis that it's not cultural appropriation. It's not mocking or making fun of. If anything, people should take it as a compliment that we want to do things that their culture brought to fruition. Like, what is wrong with that? I love me some Popeye's chicken and Kool-Aid and a variety of different flavors with way too much sugar in the picture. That's how I grew up, matter of fact. Does that mean I'm making fun of black folks? Or could it possibly mean that I'm just biased to that? I like the taste. I like the look. I like the flavor of whatever it is that that culture brought into creation and they, they brought to the world. God gave them that ability to bring it into life. So why is it making fun of them? So these people want everyone to be okay with like men claiming to be women and vice versa, men going into women's bathroom and taking over women's sports. And we're supposed to be okay with that, but that ain't okay with me and, and God almighty. Matter of fact, sin is sin. And it's, that's not homophobic or transphobic. That is what it is. But these are the same folks that complain about people like Kim Kardashian wearing her hair and cornrows and I'm flabbergasted. I am completely blown off my rocker and we can't continue to pacify everyone who's sensitive to getting their feelings hurt just because they want some attention. And it might be even a mental illness or confusion like the LGBTQIA plus crowd, but that don't mean we got to go along with it. That don't mean we got to keep buying into it. Matter of fact, we need to point it out and call it like it is. And it's foolishness. But this right here, folks, is a prime example of what happens when people don't recognize what Jesus Christ did on the cross for all of us. And I've said it time and time again, but we could have been extinct after Sodom and Gomorrah straight up burnt extra crispy up in this joint. But instead, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever so believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the solution, I encourage you to pick up your cross, start appreciating life instead of whining and crying about every little nitpick thing and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior and breathe in the clean, wholesome air of forgiveness that we all have because we've all sinned. And I was a scumbag of a man before my wife guided me to the Lord. And the one true king on the throne is what got me on the straight and narrow path that is to life, to righteousness. So retire all this fake oppression and virtue signaling and come sip on this eternal life and salvation. That's the way that you get over all these simpy, wimpy issues and I got to hit y'all with two verses from scripture before we roll out. So Philippians 3 verses 18 through 21 says, For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ, like I'm assuming this professor is. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even even to subject all things to himself. And the Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2 says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. All this stuff right here is passing away. Like these issues right here that are man-made, that are created out of pity and, and victimhood and just looking for attention at the end of the day. You need to look up. You need to stop looking at all these foolish ways of thinking and find the Lord. You need to start walking with a purpose instead of walking 
talking with a uh, purpose of getting attention and, and getting people to feel bad for you. Nobody feels bad for you. you. You might think you got it bad, but Jesus was the only perfect person to ever walk this earth. And he took on the cross voluntarily for all the evil and the sin when he didn't have to. So I don't, I'll never feel bad for you. Whatever you're going through, we all got cars, different cars that we were dealt, different upbringings, different sin and demons that we battle on a day to day basis, man or woman. There's only two genders. They're supposed to be with each other, period. You may disagree. That may ruffle some feathers is what it is. We need a lot more people calling out sin when they see it instead of just catering to it, patting them on the back saying, no, it's okay. You good. No, you're not good. I understand if it's a mental illness and the confusion that you're battling, but you need to wake up. Stop taking for granted all these things that God didn't have to allow us to have. You need to recognize that things are what they are. And that's, that's all it has to be. You don't have to make it into some issue or some relevant news headline because it's, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. It's chaotic. And it keeps leading to more satan satanic ways of thinking and lust and promiscuity and just utter goofiness. So that's all I got to say about it. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell before you roll out, ring that bell. That's how you make that happen. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can always buy the merch that you see me wearing like this. He is the way shirt made by my lovely wife over on her Etsy store. You can check out all the links in my description section. We appreciate it. By no means do you have to get anything. I just appreciate you allowing me to take over your screen with my freckle face for a few minutes and, and ran at you and go on this uh, turbo tongue sort of whatever I just went on right here. Hopefully you got some value from it. If you did share this video, get it out in front of other pe people and allow them to think for themselves. But until next time, I love y'all. I'm praying for you. Godspeed. I'm gone.